Hey guys, welcome back to Max TV Original. In today's video, we're going to be looking at making your own motorized follow focus for the camera or camera lens in this case. I have decided to build my own video crane. So I bought this motorized moving head for the camera. And while the camera itself is motorized and it can pan and tilt, the problem that I was having is the lens. The lens does have its own motorized zoom and motorized iris, but it does not have motorized focus. So I've decided to build this little device that goes onto your rig and makes your lens motorized. You can, you, you can actually use it for uh, multiple things like uh, focus or zoom or any other lens control. At the moment it is set to focus. So let's get to the bench and build our own follow focus. So here we have a follow focus for the camera that you can uh, easily buy on eBay or Aliexpress. Let's have a look at it. It's a manual follow focus uh, that is designed for a video rig. You simply slide it onto the rig. That will contact your lens focus and as you're turning it, it will also turn the lens. So it's, it's easier if you're forward facing and uh, you have a big camera you can easily just adjust focus from the side. I have started uh, the doing the cable a bit earlier, cable for the motor a bit earlier than um, cameras rolled. So I've uh, what I've done off shot is just simply attach this uh, homemade cable to the uh, NEMA 14. So we will need a NEMA 14 motor, one of those follow focus available, any brand will do, they all the same. Uh, from eBay and I've made a little metal bracket. So first what we're going to do is we're going to open the follow focus. So once you remove the screw it won't feel like it's opening easily but it, it's just stuck with all the goo inside. So here we have a two little gears and one of them is attached to that it's really hard to see because it's black, but it's one of them is attached to this uh, turning wheel. So using an Allen key, we're simply going to loosen it up. And now we can remove this knob. And it happened that they are exactly the same diameter size shaft on those gears as your NEMA 14 or any NEMA really, but 14 works the best. Okay, first of all, let's install the bracket. So the bracket is uh, simply uh, cut out of uh, just a one and a half millimeter aluminum or aluminum uh, with the two ears that are bent inwards. The bracket has now been attached to the motor. And the next thing we're gonna do is dilute the goo that you find inside here with uh, some lubrication because the goo makes it really sticky, so you don't want it. I've actually noticed with a manual follow focus that when you turn the wheel, as you're focusing, because you're doing it slowly, and as you stop and let go, the wheel will still slightly turn back, and the focus will defocus again because of that goo inside. So I strongly recommend, even if you're not planning on making a motorized follow focus, just opening it up and diluting um, the sticky uh, lubrication inside with uh, some sort of other lubricant, uh, you could use maybe a little bit of WD-40, so it's not springy. Uh, once that's done, we simply put the motor in. So now that you're putting the motor in, once the shaft starts protruding from there, is a good time to add that little gear on. So now what we wanna do is push the motor all the way in with a gear still loose and attach the bottom screw and tighten it up. Once the motor is sitting there firmly you want to hold that wheel outwards pushing it that way then take your allen key put it in the gear let me I'll give that in shot put it in the gear that attaches to the motor and push it out that way towards the center so the gears are in a close contact. Once that done, start tightening it. Now that's tight. And here we have a motor attached to the um, main wheel. So let's reattach the top. So now simply slide the top under the 
little wing that we've made, close it, and put another screw in. And here we have motorized follow focus. Now let's get to the electronic part. So here I've already attached the cable with the connector. You can use any cable, four core uh, will do. So you can check it uh, for a play. If there is a little bit of play, like if you're turning it and it seems a bit loose, then you'd probably better opening it up and tightening those uh, gears closer together. But here we have a perfect, you can feel every single step of it as you're turning it. So that's done. Now we've assembled a circuit board and I will go over it just in a second. Uh, but that's a result. So I'm using a multi-turn pot in, a 10K pot with Arduino Nano, it doesn't matter which Arduino you have or uh, at Mega 328P or something. And the A49, a double eight uh, stepper motor driver with a capacitor. So I'm supplying five volts to the whole system. I've already uploaded the code. The code is included in description below. Uh, it's the whole package with the circuit board, uh, stencil, everything is ready for you to go. So, uh, and uh, it's, as you, as you just start turning, you can see the wheel starts turning and you can literally calibrate the focus the way you want to by slightly turning it. So every single step. And yeah, so that's gonna be a principle. So I will show you, uh, I'll, let me assemble the whole circuit board and uh, we'll see what the device looks like after I have assembled it. Here is the ready circuit board that I've made. Now you may be asking why is the um, driver on the opposite side and to Arduino wouldn't it be easy to fit it just in that spot? Yes it would. But the reason I've done that, that this uh, controller itself needs cooling. So what I have done is I've uh, cemented a little piece of aluminium onto it which will be contacting the housing. So say if this is the um, outside of the metal casing that it's going to go into, I'm going to add a little bit of um, thermal paste onto that and then mount the board like that. So it's sitting on the standoffs and that metal uh, aluminium brick is going to be contacting the external uh, walls of that aluminium uh, box that it's going to go into. So this way it's going to stay nice and cool and that little thing that they include uh, in, a, in a kit becomes redundant. It's too little anyway, it gets hot. So not in this case, but usually they do get hot. So I've uh, temporarily tagged those uh, power wires. The blue one is um, common, a uh, red one is the, going to be a power for the logic and the brown is power for the motors. So four capacitors on top, a nano board, a couple of uh, Molex connectors. So let's plug in the motor and the trim pot. I'm just about to turn the power on. The uh, lines are both common for the motor because I have a 35 amp, five volt power supply. So it's gonna be just fine. So I'm turning it on right now. And as we see, both lines have power, both lines. Let me just turn the light off. So yeah, red and uh, orange. Uh, it's not even, it's orange and green. Um, and let's see what happens when I turn the pot. It's working just fine. So as I'm turning it, here's our follow focus just doing its job there. Just tiny micro, micro steps if we're turning it very slowly with no problem at all. So uh, let's uh, take that board and plug it into, um, well, hook it up to the camera and have a look what it what happens, how good is it at uh, doing the focus. As you can see, this is the original manual follow focus. It just sits on the rig and as you're turning the um, follow focus, it turns the lens. So let's take this off. So here you can see that the follow focus is working just fine. So it is very small steps as I'm turning it. You can see it's just moving tiny little bit at the time, or you can move it a bit faster if you wish. So uh, also when I started first, there was not enough current um, to move it, the motor. So I've adjusted that little trim pot on the A49888 uh, to give it a bit more current and it's now turning it just fine with no problems. So let's have a look at the schematic. Uh, we're going to be using just a few things, uh, Arduino, driver, um, a couple of capacitors. So the Arduino is powered through the diode 
from the mains filter through the capacitor. So we have three inputs, uh, which I will show you on that schematic in a second. So anyway, we've got the three pin input. One is the center ground. One goes, uh, first one goes, uh, separates down through the diode, uh, through um, two capacitors. One is electrolytic, 470 microfarad, 25 volts. One is 100 nanofarad for filtering and it goes to the voltage in of Arduino pin. The second one goes again through a couple of filtering capacitors through AMS triple one seven five volt. Uh, you can use a simple LM75 uh, 7805 or something like that and it goes through another filtering capacitors to a power supply of the uh, A4988 4988 driver. The second power, they're both 5 volts, goes through uh, two capacitors, uh, which is 2200 microfarad, 25 volts, and two of 100 nanofarad filtering capacitors, and that's going to a voltage motor for the driver. Uh, two LEDs just to indicate that both lines are on. What else do we have here? We've got the 10K multi turn pot, which is uh, uh, also connected to ground through a um, 100 nanofarad capacitor just for filtering and stability. And that's pretty much it. Let's have a look. I've included also uh, non-inverted. If you're using a method of circuit, make, circuit board making uh, as um, toner transfer, which is I've printed this with a toner and you stick it onto the board with an iron, you know, uh, then you will use the non-inverted. If you're using a method of um, film photoresist, which I do, you will use the inverted one and print it on vellum or transparency film. And this is the, uh, if you're using also um, solder resist, you, will, you, you can use that stencil for the solder resist. I also included in a file component placement map, just in case if you don't know what goes where. So I've shown you that a uh, 220 capacitor goes, uh, electricity goes here and, and so on. Uh, then, uh, so that's easy. Then there's also normal um, component placement map, which you can use with a component list, and they all match. So you know that uh, C3, which is 220, 25 volts electricity, goes here, and say C11, which is 10 nanofarad, 50 volt ceramic, goes here. So that's another file that's included, and of course the schematic itself. Thanks for watching this episode on how to build your own motorized follow focus. I hope you enjoyed it. Now we got a Christmas giveaway coming up very shortly. So the next video we'll release is with the details on what we're giving away and how to get it. So stay tuned. My name is Max. See you next time. Bye.